Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of TB and J Podcast. Across from me, as always, is Troy Brittingham. And across from me is Jeff Ackman. And sitting diagonally, or catty corner, is uh, Chris Carroll. Catty corner? Are you saying I'm catty? And Chris Caddy Carroll. And D, we got the whole gang here together today. We're back together for a fun alley. A fun alley indeed. Ba, 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 ba. Troy, hit the theme song. No. That wasn't the button, Troy. I did hit it, to be fair. It didn't help that I said no right before, so it made me seem really bad. And then I went ahead and hit the button. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we both have buttons. I did hit the button. Guys, we're only like six days late, but we're wrapping up the finale of Peacemaker. And the gag reel that is newly released of new content. Yeah, totally. That's how it works. I did hit the button. So, uh, thumbs up, thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Troy, we'll start with you. I'm going to say thumbs up. Chris, we'll go to you. It's it's a thumbs up for the episode, but it's really a thumbs down for the series. Real? No, fuck off. <laughs> okay, Dave, we'll go to you. It is a thumbs up. It is a thumbs up. Jeff, we'll go to you. Guess what? It's a fucking thumbs up, y'all. I don't understand. Like, this fucking TV show was so well done from start to finish. I don't think yeah. I had a single goddamn complaint about this whole thing. Um, my biggest complaint with TV shows in general is that they often drag on longer. They, they outwear their welcome, you know? The show is there longer than it needs to be just because they want to make episodes, they want to make money. And one of the things I really love about shows moving to like streaming services like this, for instance, is that your whole plot is like tied up in a bow before it even launches. And you have like the whole story is told out. You don't know if there's going to be a second season, so you just tie everything up in a nice, neat bow. In this case, with Peacemaker, there will be a season two, which oh, is shit. Bad. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you saw that. No, I didn't. Uh, Peacemaker officially got greenlit for a season two, Ooh, yeah. uh, with all of the main cast returning. They had to. For the they they ones, clearly had still so by much. James Gunn. Yep, still yeah, James Gunn, they, still John Cena, ooh. still they, Jennifer. He's Hall. James. He's James Rifle now. Oh, he got upgraded. <laughs> <laughs> they um yeah they they clearly had so much fun making this um they also I mean like the, uh, just a I lot mean, have of you seen the there. intro. <laughs> It, it it was it, it was yeah. such a blast. I mean, like, and they and it was so well done, and it was and, and there's so many good things to say about it. Um, so why don't we get started? Absolutely. So uh, the episode picks up with uh, the gang sitting outside the barn, and they're trying to kill the cow because uh, you gotta they gotta kill this fucking cow, which, as we learned at the end of the last episode, is a giant kaiju. It's a giant kaiju. Uh, uh, a fucking Cronenberg looking caterpillar monster that's getting its titties milked for with a single the, tooth. Yep, with a single tooth and it's getting those. Somebody has to find this hot, right? It was a giant. It was it's like a giant baby monster. Somebody it's finds kinda... you attractive, so you know. There's... Well, I feel like the two shouldn't be compared. I think that I'm, <laughs> you know, fairly normal looking at least. <laughs> Troy, I'm, the audience hasn't seen you in person. You could be a gelatinous uh, Cronenberg caterpillar monster for yeah, all they I know. Could be a sexy one. Some HR Geiger looking nightmare Listen, fuel. He, but but with the perfect penis. Mm-hmm. Perfect. He, penis. he is a World War II German scientist. <laughs> Sear him away <laughs> from being a god, guys. So relax. Uh, I'm saying he looks like Steve Rogers before the serum. Um, <laughs> That's the best, like, so if, any, if anybody ever watched Chris Evans get beat up in that alleyway and was like, that's the guy for me, I'm your man. <laughs> that's the guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> man. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, the, no, the, uh, we had, wow, that, we're off track already. Um, how did we get there? Anybody remember? No. Uh, through, to, to the cow? Is that the what you I don't know. The, the, Cut all moving this. on. I just remember them hitting to the beginning of the episode. They're just on their way to the cow. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. No. I, yeah, it doesn't matter. It does move? I on. meant how we got on this subject. Oh, because we were talking about the Cronenberg cow. And <laughs> I'm saying Troy's where were we face. in the real conversation? <laughs> uh, 
uh, so the barn, right? Yeah. I'm just going to skip over everything. So they Please. get to the barn. They got a bunch of the Peacemaker helmets. They're trying to figure out how to kill the cow. And they have the bright idea to use the Sonic Boom helmet, uh, which I guess got recharged between episode one and now, to uh, blow up the cow. Or at least cripple the structure so that it crashes down onto the cow. They also have the human missile helmet, which makes an appearance at the very end. And then the, I forget what the third one was. It's human torpedo, I think. There, there, there was there was like uh, uh, scabies and like yeah this one gives you scabies uh, there, was, there was floated away underwater <laughs> scabies underwater was grab, and and I heard that boom, one of the ones the that torpedo. he mentioned that but that he didn't get while well, he was in like early episode when he was in the in the first place was like an anti itch one which was I guess for the scabies <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty funny uh, uh, joke actually yeah um, but they, they have the helmets they have the bright idea to use the sonic boom helmet on top of the barn and he's like oh we'll just have eagerly do it and they all think he's stupid they're like no <laughs> eagerly can't understand you that's stupid and then he's like no, no no I got this and he and vigilante take a good like two minutes of just trying to convince eagerly to fly the helmet to the barn and he does start to and then just completely veers right and doesn't even go anywhere and just drops it randomly (laughs) drops it in the forest and then fucking uh hardcore's like great guess we gotta go find the fucking helmet so they're all off finding the helmet and this is where uh we have some more character development with chris in that he sees the ghost of his now deceased father haunting him and telling him how you thought killing me would be the end of it i'm gonna haunt you forever boy like i'm gonna fucking (laughs) gut tire fucking interactions perfect it yeah. was yeah, and Harcourt witnesses it, and uh, he he ends up going for his poison dart blowgun that he has in his belt because apparently oh, right. Peacemaker has that. He was like, get his oh, he's like, what are you gonna shoot me? He's like, no. He's like, you can't do that. He's like, they'll 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 know yeah, you're here. I'm gonna use my gun. The butterflies like, will no, hear. I'm gonna use the my dart. I'm gonna use my blow dart. <laughs> and the and like the interaction is so great because. Because, like, it, it's as if Robert, Robert Patrick is just like, oh, no, that's a genius move. Like, and he's like, yeah, you didn't think I could do that? Just like, you're fucking insane. <laughs> like, yep. And uh, it just relates me back to that early line from, like, episode two or, or something where he's just like, he's like, what, what if I just kill women, women and children? Like, what if I'm just a maniac? <laughs> like, <laughs> just yep. such a, that is, that, running back to that joke is great with both he and Vigilante, as, it, except the, Lack of awareness. It's on also it's part. also a genius way to have a season two when them not being like, well, I guess we can't have Robert Patrick back. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I mean, yeah, but now we can because he's he's a ghost man, right. like having Alec Guinness in Empire and Jedi. And you can always have him in flashbacks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but he's a fake ghost man. Alec Guinness is a real ghost man. Yeah, a real ghost man. Yeah, he was more of a forced ghost man. <laughs> hey. One of these days, I'm going to remember which button's which. No, your one was okay. okay. You're they're never, they're never going to remember. They're actually more yeah. valid than your normal cricket press. You'll never be on a lost cause. Zoo. I am a lost um, cause. Um, so uh, they get the helmet back, and then it's like, well, fuck, Eagly can't do it, so now we need a plan B. So uh, what they have Chris do is find this giant... Uh, security guard, and he just fucking stabs him through the ear. Oh, yeah. And just fucking, it was fucking gruesome to watch. Like, I swear to God, that guy was not an extra. That guy's just dead, okay? John Cena murdered a man. That's what we just witnessed. There was some, there was some, um... It's like when we watched Hardcore Henry, Troy. But he murdered, there but was he some... murdered him way better than, uh, 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 Jason Moe could have. <laughs> later, later like... in the episode. Gotcha. Uh, well, shit there, on there were, um... <sighs> There, there was good showing, not telling, storytelling in this because she, Hardcore asked, tells him before that she's like, "I, Chris, I need you to do something," at, which is, which is like this murder, which is to murk this guy. Where, where she's kind of established this, like, I don't. Wasn't there something about like killing? Like he, didn't he doesn't want to kill, kill people anymore. But he says the butterflies are different because those people are dead. Yeah, and it's just the butterfly inside yeah. them, and the, they've made it clear the butterfly is the enemy. So he's okay doing that. Yeah. So like, but like, I got something about like I need you to do something. Like it was a him. Like she kind of understood him, or yeah, it it felt weird. But I mean, it, she didn't need to go through all that because it's a butterfly, and he's fine killing them. But he does end up killing that guy, taking the outfit to give it to Economos. And <laughs> one of my favorite jokes is he's like, "But why are the pants all wet?" And he was, it might have been from the cutscene at the end. I don't remember. But uh, he says, "Why are the pants all wet?" And oh no, no, because one of the very few, uh, no, one of the unspoken things we don't talk about in war is that when you die, you shit yourself. And this man had uh, a lot he, of diarrhea. He washed it. He washed it in the river. Was no, the thing. no. He, he said, and I washed. And he says it's one of the. Uh, it's one of the. Uh, 
the unspoken truths of uh, being a badass. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> like, and uh, that that was that was good. But he's like, he's like, w- but was it diarrhea? He's like, yeah. He's like, I didn't say it was diarrhea. And he's like, but was it diarrhea? He's like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so good. It was like, so good. That they they just have a, a like, and, and you saw that reel, like that that gag reel. Yeah. They, the scene is. I he's mean, fucking funny. He's. This is why he was a great wrestler. It just when you have mic skills, you, you just, and he's like he, rapid fire. Like this, this isn't like the char. This isn't just rock being charming with like, like uh, you know, built in lines. Like if you smell, mm-hmm. like just leading up to the same thing. Although I'm sure there was plenty of that too. He's just riffing. He's he seems like he's in this like perfect place of like relationship with what he's doing in this role and all of that stuff right and it's just like he's he's eating it up man he's yeah like, and this it, is great, it, it, it the, the whole show seems like james gunn is just like all right here's an hour roll off a thousand takes we're just gonna take the best ones yeah yeah and that's not a bad idea when you have someone like john cena who's so good at improv because that's 80 percent of what professional wrestling is it's just improv and working with your partner to deliver a good show an economist who's apparently like Steve Agee, good yeah. friends with uh, with with him uh, with Gunn, yeah, um, yeah. They, they, you know, he he's, he's also really a pretty good big comedy too. legend in his own right as well, and he right. has an he's extensive really history good. with uh, your boy Dan Harmon and also oh, Justin cool. Roiland. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, uh, they're all good friends as well. Yeah, Steve Agee does a lot of side voices in uh, Rick and Morty. Okay, yeah, he, he's uh, he's solid too because his his lines are funny too. Absolutely. Um, but uh, so uh, Economos has this thing in a duffel bag and he's walking towards the barn to put it in. And then he gets stopped by the Fitzgibbon butterfly. And he's like, hey, where are you going? And he's just like in the in the barn. And this is good. And Fitzgibbon's like, why? And then like in the it's other side tense. of the radio, there, it's super it, it, tense. It, it, like, we don't know what to do. We're fucked. He just, says, just like, because of what's in this bag. And Fitzgibbon's just like, OK. okay. And just turns and just like because of what's in this bag, like (laughs) the delivery is so good. He's like because of what's in this bag, and 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 it's it's just that that might work. (laughs) That might work, and it did. Uh, Yeah, this is the the I mean the realm of disbelief for the show. That's like absurd, of course. But I I mean, what what am I? You know, there's redneck hillbillies. Nobody. Uh, a few people have died, but it's, it's all insane. So, yeah. like, you know, I don't, I don't mind it because it's doing like so many fun, good things uh, throughout. Like, and, and interesting. Like this, this whole sequence is not your average kind of. Like, I mean, I guess the sneak into the lair is something kind of normal, but like, it, it's just fun how they and his they, and they the didn't... real the real part is the next part that like when they catch him. This is like one yeah. of the standouts of the episode. So. Yeah, so he ends up dropping the helmet uh, in the stairwell uh, because he sees the cow and runs away, screaming, "No, no, no, not another fucking kaiju!" Yeah. And he's like speed walking out of the barn, and then he gets stopped again by Fitzgibbon, and he's like, "Why did your human do that?" And he's like, "Do what?" And he was like, "Dye his beard," <laughs> and then he has this like hilarious but also terribly heartbreaking like moment of truth in the character where he's like he thought he made his character look younger and handsome and he never had a girlfriend and blah 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 and then Fitzgibbon's just think, like he didn't think anybody noticed he didn't think anybody recently noticed until... where he pointed out all the time and it's just like it's so heartbreaking but like it, it works so well on both levels of like this would make sense like the heartbreaking he's just telling yep. him that and it's the only he knows it's the only thing that he can get out of the situation with and it just complete it's just a great completion to that character that's one yep a one note bit and then Fitzgibbon's punchline to it he's like wow humans are so pathetic huh no. and, <laughs> and then uh it kind of was like yup they sure are and then turns and leaves and you can just see Chris on the other end of the microphone just like hating himself for being such a jackass towards this guy for fucking days at this point. Mm-hmm. And uh, God, it was it was a really nice moment. And then as he's leaving, one of the the the, the white supremacists that they took over from the jail, he's like, "Hey, he left this helmet in there." And then you have this awesome scene that we've seen in some of the uh, trailers for the show where they're all just running down the field, uh, chasing Economos, who, to his credit outruns them for quite a while because oh the reason he has to do this is because uh, uh out of io like drops the mic the the walkie-talkie that's supposed to yeah announce like she's like oh shit and then, like there's a bunch of like just dumb moments of like 
reality where like oh i went to do it and it fell out of my hands <laughs> like yeah and then economist later is one of the funniest sequences ever to me oh yeah it, so so they uh, so they have a walkie talkie in the helmet and uh at a bio sets it off uh, activates sonic boom and she does that four times and just completely like destroys the building the golf butterfly who's currently in sophie uh they she freaks out and just like sprints back to the cow because she's got to defend the cow Everyone else is going after Economos to kick his fucking ass. And uh, this is where Chris and Vigilante and Harcourt enter with guns a-blazing. Vigilante has the To the theme song. To the theme song. To the song. theme song. Do you want to taste it? By Wigwam. Uh, dude, some of the sequences here. Vigilante flips the shield. Uh, the shield uh, throw up in the air, and then he shoots it. Yeah, mm-hmm. the shoots it down into someone. This whole scene was so fucking brutal and i was watching it with a friend of the pod john fitzwater and uh we were but we both made the comment where it's like you're not gonna see captain america do that shit with his shield he's not gonna go (laughs) throat cutting (laughs) some bitches and like chopping heads off captain america 4 coming to you this (laughs) (laughs) i mean now there's a new captain america maybe we'll get that r-rated marvel movie we've always wanted um but I, I I doubt it. But uh, it was really fucking cool to see them just kicking ass. Harcourt tells Chris he's got to go after the cow, so he's running into the building, and he ends up like falling through and getting fucking piled under rubble. Yes, yeah, and crazy. then Harcourt and Vigilante are out there, and they just get fucking shot and kicked and Vigilante. So, so Vig so Vig has some kind of healing factor apparently. I mean he's clearly if like James Gunn wanted to put Deadpool in he this movie literally, but couldn't. He literally fell asleep twice last episode yes. and this one and woke up better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He f- and he said all I need is a nap. And he's like oh he's just a nap but he and he passed out. They put him in the gurney, and then he walked up, and they made a point to show the ba- his back gurney, like he doesn't have a bullet wound. Like, <laughs> you might have a point. He's just like he just gets out, walks away, just jumps out the he window. Literally, <laughs> might be like, Wade Wilson. So I, I think he's just their Deadpool at mm-hmm. this point. I'm yeah, perfectly fine with it. He's got the swords. I'm he fine with him knives. being it, not like a. Gross he, testicle man. No, just a, not like completely <laughs> invincible in the moment. Like he could, he's gonna take a beating and like he'll, it'll take him a while, but he'll recover. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, like you know, obviously, I, I don't think he has like a super healing factor, like a Wolverine or Deadpool, where they're just gonna like regenerate if there's a cell left <laughs> at this point. <laughs> at this point, man, there used to be when I started, like, like back in my day. back in my day, I was back little... in my day, Wolverine. I was literally All right. about to say he, it. he could die from decapitation if you could get if you could get if you, or if no 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 the key was burning his him down to a skeleton right that was that was the key that was the only thing that yeah did that's it. how he died in days, of future, in days of future past he gets blasted there that mm-hmm. was firmly established you could have his skeleton that would be it right but like you you couldn't cut his head off because of the the skeleton. You couldn't do like all the other traditional things and everything else. He would just heal, like heal from. But that, even that, was like an OP from where he was originally at, where he was just like a quick healer. Yeah. <laughs> like they, then he survived a nuclear blast, and then it was like, all right, can't kill this guy. <laughs> all right. Anyway, back to Unless the just not Logan. that powerful. It's like and a that fucking cockroach. Unless you're in Logan and he just gets stabbed a million times after his healing factor stops working because yeah. he's old. Yeah. Do you? So did anybody else? Kind of expect them to at least kill one character. Yeah, I thought uh, they were going to. I mean, I I really thought Harcourt was done for. Mm-hmm. I I I mean, it may, it might make some sense, but it, it, it was like they they definitely did three full. If you count John Cena, which I but I really didn't like. Right, four, like three, like they did three. He was he was probably outs. the only safe one because in the because home. literally, uh, Economist almost dies. I thought he was done because mm-hmm. I was like perfect character arc. They planned a per- oh, you're gonna kill him. Like that's even harsher. Like kill <laughs> yeah. him right then. That even sets off the rest of the battle. I was like, okay. But then they pulled it off, and I'm like, all right, it still makes sense. I mean, he, he was underneath a pile, like a zombie pile. Right, but they're of not actually zombies, so it's yeah. not like the same thing. But they, but like, you know, that was like done for, and then they pulled back on that. So you're like, all right, at least it made sense that they pulled back on that. But then. As as shit's going down, he's under the rubble. They're putting, you know, they're doing the whole last stand thing where they yep. where they fall down before they get back up, and it was just a little bit too much. I, I'll give it because what in the moment it was Vidge because I'm just like he shot, and then like later he just pops up, and I'm like, 
uh, like, am I supposed to, like, I mean, I guess it's good to be like the subtle, like, I'm not really telling you the story. I'm just showing you that like, yeah, you got back up and right. But like, I, I got it. I, I, he has a healing factor. Like he's just too. Maybe man. Yeah, I like it. Maybe he's a superhero, but I thought Harcourt was super done for because she got mm-hmm. shot in the back and in the arm, yeah. and she's down on the ground and she's coughing up blood. Which, um, if you follow James Gunn on Twitter, he tweeted out, uh, "Do you want to taste it?" Comes full circle from the beginning of the sh- episode, from the beginning of the show, where it's John Cena dancing and it's all fun and games, to now, does Harcourt want to taste the blood in her mouth? And then it was like hashtag Watch Peacemaker or something like that, and I was like, "Oh my god, that's so dark," but also that makes so much sense um but hardcore's like lying on the ground coughing up blood and fucking a butterfly almost takes her over before Adebayo like grabs oh, it yeah, and yanks dope. it out of her mouth and shoots it like I really thought she was fucking and that's done. oh okay so you're missing so we skipped over like economist and her and we did, she we did, like did. takes the she takes the um the the helmets right and she's like I'm gonna go and she's like what what makes you think you can do this and she's like because I'm made for this shit yep uh, and so she you know and he kind of like her yeah mother. me too and he goes to and he goes to jump over and like to like catch up with her and hits his uh, shin on the on the fence uh, on the fence and immediately like tears it up like like bad like did, did they, I couldn't quite he, see he it. broke his leg it did yeah but did he like did it did, was it like a compound where like it yep. breaks through the skin oh yeah He's oh like, yeah what the fuck and like I was just like I fucking I hate that that is my at like that That's is the thing one of my worst like the, oh yeah when the bone I was, comes I was out. definitely squeamish at that point yeah but, like, I was like but oh. that it but it's another thing where it's like. This fucking this guy. Is bending like the realm of possibility, but I know that you can do that that easy. Like, yeah. Like especially when you're you're that tall, big of a guy. Yep. Like you could. There's a long way to fall, and you fall hard. So like, if you get that, if you you know hit it, it you can absolutely do that if you're not paying attention. Yep. And it's just what the fuck? He's you're you're done there. But I was just like that was such a what just that what did they just. Literally have him fall yep. <laughs> and yep. crack it. Did, like he cr- no- did he crawl a little fast too? But yes, I'm, I'm gonna. Definitely. I'm gonna, yeah, definitely. I'm going to to, to just. I'm, I'm gonna do whatever I can to nitpick, nitpick as much as possible yeah. because oh, I think. No, you're right. We, we are fanboying hard. But uh, no, there's the, and this is the thing though is like all the things that are nitpicky like that are forgiven because it's a zany show yeah. and and it and y- y- you know. I don't want this to get too dark. No. In, in the end, I, I'm I'm having fun with the way it is. Do I like stakes? Do I do I want to see like maybe one of those characters die next year? Maybe. Mm-hmm. But like yeah, like I saw Mern die like a couple. Like I mm-hmm. I liked Mern a lot. Like right. I liked that character quite a bit. And I think they can introduce new characters and continue to go on. I mean, hell, I would love to see Batmite. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> who is apparently that. in universe, right? Yeah, they did like they did do that. Um. That's fucking hilarious. Um, so yeah, so they, so they uh, Adebayo goes in. Adebayo goes in to try the- to help Chris, and uh, she <laughs> uh, it, earlier when Chris is showing off the helmets and he shows off the human torpedo, he says, "Yeah, it's fucking useless because you're gonna shatter every bone in your body, and it's just the worst." So we're not using that one, and that's the one Adebayo has on, and she's down there helping Chris, and there's this awesome montage of her like digging through the rubble and Chris digging through the rubble and he grabs a hand and the hand pulls him out and it's Sophie and she has Chris and she's talking to Chris about how the butterflies are here from another planet because their planet was ruined by greed she, and yeah, corruption. Yeah, she's basically, the premise before she tells us is that you're going to help us like save the thing. She's like, why would I do that? And she's like, because you're a peacemaker. And she goes on to say that there's she goes on story. to say, like, we're here to help humanity, actually, because our planet died from a lack of resources and greed and corruption and terribleness. So we needed to leave, and we found this planet, and you guys are making the same mistakes we did, so we thought we would take over key leaders and make the hard decisions for you so that you don't end up down the same path. And and, and, so that we, and we don't care how many men we show that have to die to make sure that we do that. Don't you see? We're the same. Yeah, and like, and and it's it's a and we're not doing it full justice because it is a really well. It's a beautiful speech. speech, and it is like a moment where I thought to myself, "All right, no, uh, okay." So I saw this. I also looked at the 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 song character song. Yeah, and, Sophie and, song, and and like I was like I could and and Goff in, in general, right? Mm-hmm. And and Captain uh, Locke, right? Like all like these characters are 
pretty dope, right? Like, like, mm-hmm. like I'm like, oh, I could see this too. I could see him kind of like telling, like in the moment doing this. So it was a really convincing thing. Now, obviously, I want to talk about like the analogy here. Um, analogy? I, I don't understand. Yeah. Well, the what do you mean? <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay. Uh, no, I, I just mean like the illusion here to like. Um, uh, you know, uh, this this is the debate between like freedom and safety, right? Like this is like yep. the 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 like there, you know. So this is a very kind of kick ass. It's got this kind of like, uh, like hit, n- not a hill. I don't want to say hillbilly culture, but kind of like a like a. It's got the 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 hard. 80s rock it's mm-hmm. got the mm-hmm. the the white supremacist kind of subtone it's got this kind of like dirty grungy kind of american freedom type of way um and to look at like the mentality of like that idea of peacemaker of like i don't care what have what i have to kind of destroy this one kind of talking about people's freedoms or talking about people that's like the kind of analogy that they make um and and it's it, it's an it's an interesting argument to be like to control you, right? To totally, well, and there, and this is all mind control, right? So, like, high yeah. mind thinking is is the en- the enemy in the sense of like when you have people w- wary of like government control or government kind of things. So, like, in the end, this does kind of weigh on that element on a on a kind of more right wing or conservative side, uh, or, or or at least a libertarian or an side. assassins versus templar side for my my nerd friends out there <laughs> of just of just yes, because I don't know what a conservative is. But which 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 also just making the which, which just goes again you know again to see like there is a, li- a strict like libertarian value system to guns work like because he 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 leans into a lot like he's anything personal freedoms like you, you know he has Adebayo's character they have the the the, the lesbian characters there that you know John Cena's character is by I think they I think they established that or, or decided that he was omnisexual yeah I, I think was the the idea like, apparently that was John Cena's doing yeah. Hmm. Yeah, no, that's yeah. like canon. Like apparently, like officially, like as far as they know, the character he's omnisexual. Mm-hmm. So it, it, there's a lot of like that in there of like so there's all of that kind of personal freedom stuff is is absolutely there, but they lean into a lot of like the left sides of those things throughout. But this kind of illusion is, I think, one of the ones that that he plays that's a lot more like don't be controlled by by like a. You know, shadowy organization type of thing, right. kind of like you know, cabal esque. Mm-hmm. Like, du- you know, that's not worth the murder because that's what he ends up doing. So the it, it's it's a nice dynamic to see. Like he says, "What do you say to this?" And then he just says, "Activate human torpedo." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that and then Adebayo like flies into the cow as like a human bullet and just rips it apart. And then he just fucking executioner style in the forehead to Locke, and Locke is just fucking dead. And then he says, I'm yeah. sorry, Goff, and deliberately shoots him in the chest so that the butterfly can leave and escape. Um, yeah, part of her speech was like, I saw your compassion when you, when you, put, when you had even jar. Like, I, knew, I saw your yeah. pain. That was, and, and that was another thing that, like, they sold throughout to make it believable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that she, it was Ani super was, believable. Would, would even, that she would even believe this and do that. And like, uh, so uh, everything kind of made sense for the characters. And for that, I can forgive... It, the character's choices made sense, so I can forgive the some yeah, certain the, um, impossibilities of the reality. Because I because I can always bend the reality of it, the possibility of them doing something. But unless they it kind of breaks the story that they've established, or if it breaks the characters or the choices that they make, and every character's choice and decision was like, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense, and it surprised you. Yep, and that's how you know the, it's a good story. It's telling. the it's the Jurassic Park disappearing enclosure thing right where when right. they go over the fence yeah, yeah. suddenly it's a big cliff right or or just no or or the the t-rex coming out of nowhere to save him from the raptors yeah rule of cool wins there like mm-hmm. it's not like they but, clearly established that it makes thunderous sounds as it approaches yeah uh, <laughs> like that are apparently very far apart yes <laughs> um but after after how the... long was that step <laughs> yeah after the death of the cow, uh, they head outside, and uh, Chris just like cradles Harcourt's body, picks her up. It seems very much like she's dead and has yeah. bit the bullet. Vidge is up and walking. Literally, um, Economos is uh, there as well uh, on the ground still. I don't think he they he got Does, picked Vidge up. Vidge just he, he got pops like out of nowhere. He's like, hey, 
<laughs> and the last we saw him, he was like on the ground. Yeah, he's like, hey. And I'm just like, oh my God, what is it going to take to kill this motherfucker? He, he is going to have some sort of thing in season two. Like, there's going to be. He fucking some... better show up in season two. Oh, well, well, he's yeah. going to be in it. I'm just saying that, that I think D's right that he's going to. They're going to be like, oh, Healing yeah, he factor. does have. The, or he's like not going to know that he has superpowers, and they're just going to be like, yeah, nope. Nobody can do that, and he's just like, "Oh, I just thought that, that oh, was." He's oh, like, what? Shit. what do you mean? You can't yeah. just just get up, like <laughs> you can't just like sleep off a gunshot wound to the back. Yeah, I thought mm-hmm. you could just do that. He's like, "No, ever, you no, know, it doesn't. Make, no, it's fine. Every everybody becomes like a and you and you sleep next to the radiation rock, and you're good. Like, <laughs> you sleep just next say, to this like, glowing fine. green. And what he gives you those great dreams and makes you think that like he's like, what are you talking about? Like, I can see that. What if there. what if they reveal it through his like pinky toe coming back? Oh, that'd be funny. That'd be oh. really funny. That'd be a great callback. And speaking of callbacks... Well, he didn't lose it, though, did he? No, he lost half of it. Yeah. Um, in the beginning of this episode, uh, uh, Adebayo is on the phone with her mother saying that they need the fucking Justice League down here. This is a crisis. You know, this needs to happen now. And uh, she's like, "I right the fuck now. They're going to teleport the cow. And she's just like, well, I guess we're on our own. She can't get the Justice League here. And that's why they're going by themselves. And then, as they're carrying uh, Amelia Harcourt's limp body, fucking four of the Justice League just show up. Yeah, a silhouetted uh, Superman, a silhouetted and, Superman and, and, and Wonder, Wonder Woman. Woman, but the actual actors of Black Jason Barry Momoa Allen. and uh, uh, as Ezra Aquaman, Miller. and who plays Barry Allen? Ezra Miller. Ezra, Ezra Miller. 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 Thank you. It's the two of them actually like there in costume, and they're walking through them. And uh, I forget what the fuck Chris says, but I think he's like uh, he says like uh, he's you're uh, fucking uh, late. Uh, yeah, he you're fucking. He late. says you're fucking late, and he says. Uh, he says, uh, why don't you go fuck another fish? And he's like, yeah, I fucking hate that rumor. And, he, and he's like, I hate that rumor. And he's like, Flash is and like Barry, it's, it's not, not a rumor. rumor. Like, fuck you, Barry. Fuck you, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then Barry fucked him. Yeah. He did. Super yeah. speed style. And, Super. and he also revealed that he himself was a fish the whole time. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep, wow. Yep, 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 what a yep, twist. Yep. That's why he can run so fast. Mm. I will be answering no questions. <laughs> 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 and speaking of answering questions, we're just great at these segues today. Uh, they're at the hospital, and uh, Adebayo decides that she needs to do the right thing. So she ends up talking to uh, the press and the cameras, reporting what she's found out live across the nation. Specifically, she talks about the diary and how it was completely faked, and Peacemaker and Vigilante and, were... And the diarrhea pants, right? And the diarrhea pants, <laughs> no, that very was very important. real. Oh, okay. Uh, it uh, mixed with his own later. And she talks about how Peacemaker and Vig were working for the government under the guise of Project Butterfly, intending to take time off their sentences from Bell Reef Prison. She even incriminates uh, Amanda Waller by name for fronting this operation, saying it's been going on for a long time. And we get another cameo from Waller herself on her couch, saying, what the fuck? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. And of course, Waller is not going to have any real consequences from this. The Suicide Squad, or Task Force X, as it's still called, oh, I don't is know. still going to keep happening. Oh, I don't know. There's no way. We'll see. Maybe the season two is about taking down Waller. I- I'm wondering. Well, I think that would be an issue. I think that's. That sounds. That sounds, that sounds kind of like the setup. It sounds ambitious. But, but I think that they're going to have to establish about, like, he still has the explosive in his head. Yeah, he does. Oh, that's no true. point. Uh, Peacemaker so. still has a bomb in his head, and so do all the others from the movie, Ratcatcher, uh, Idris Elba, and Margot Robbie, because they were actual uh, people in that movie. They weren't characters. Um, <laughs> thanks I, was, for- I was wondering for a solid second if you forgot who Margot Robbie played in the movie for... No, I, I forgot who Idris Elba played in the movie. I forgot Deadshot's name. Bloodsport. Bloodsport. There you see. Good there board. You go. Deadshot, Bloodsport. Same fucking person. <sighs> Are all black male leads the same to you? <laughs> no. We're no, but when they again. literally have the same power set, it is. <laughs> 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 They're literally the same person. Uh, but, and, and Deadshot's just and more your And do your, uh, your cancel for agreeing with him. Yep. yep. So Thanks. you're both canceled. Um, and me, and, me and Chris are starting a podcast Although, now. speaking Troy, of Idris Ilba because I want to go home. Uh, what was that? No. Can I get canceled because I want to go home? Um, You'll go home soon enough, big boy. Mm-hmm. Um, so. <laughs> Why am I big the, boy? <laughs> The the in the hospital, uh, Leota asks him like, "Hey, why did you not turn on us and help the butterflies?" And he says the real reason is because he didn't want to see his friends hurt anymore, and he knew the butterflies would hurt them if he joined them. And it's kind of like, well, that doesn't. He's not saying he disagrees with Butterfly Goff. He's just saying he likes his friends more than he agreed with the butterflies. So, I mean, 
is this a full redemption arc or is there still a bit of Chris that's like, no matter who I have to kill, I want peace? Like, I feel like that that nugget is still in his head somewhere. Uh, yeah. Well, someone had an interesting idea online. I was reading a Reddit thread and someone had an idea about um, the, the final image of the episode, right? Where, because I don't know if we're there yet. Do we get to the other side? Uh, pretty much, yeah. It's at the uh, very end. She has the thing with Harcourt. He has the thing with Harcourt at the end. She's like, I heard you stayed like all three days or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you've you've been you haven't you've left for days, for days and uh, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a heart nice and heartwarming. But they, they also shot... show her learning to walk oh, again. Oh yeah, they that pretty, was an interesting yeah. kind of take. Yeah, but, through, like, but physical therapy. You know what? I like that they 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 um at least showed you some of that cuz they're going to skip over it if they do another season. <laughs> um, 100%. So it's good that they kind of do something with it. But the, um, they also showed uh, Adebayo and her girlfriend reuniting. Right. Like, yeah. I was fully expecting to like a black ops team to come in and kill them both. <laughs> just for slow for motion de- gunshots just yeah, before for they the fucking well, task force. Well, wouldn't kill her daughter. She's yeah. not that. No, the wife though. Of uh, the wife, maybe, but no, yeah. no, no, and, the and the dogs. Jeff, and the do- I don't know the t- and your little dog too. Waller is kind of a cunt. Yeah. Huh. News. I don't know if that word's appropriate. Cancel Chris Carroll. Uh, Chris is canceled. <laughs> All right, it's only me. Home. Chris the Cunt Carroll. It's now uh, the TV <laughs> and podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, so... Oh, fuck with, oh no. So the, the, the last shot that we get uh, is is you get um, the trailer and, and you get John Cena and Goff, right? And yeah. he pours out the, the last of the... The very last of the thing, And he's fluid. sucking that... And then they pan to um, the uh, the. Well, I think it starts maybe with like the the dead carcass that eagerly drops, and then they kind of pan over and you get like all the all, you used to get golf, uh, Chris and the dad, and so instead of it like they're all in kind of like different stages of life, like like Eagly's in the front, he's perfectly alive. The the other one, the the carcass is like newly dead. Um, like immediately, the uh, dad is like a a ghost now like post death mm-hmm. uh and goff is like about to die essentially he's just mm-hmm. waiting he'll be dead soon yeah and i then, mean and, he's, and, and, he's and just he, gonna starve to death that's such a terrible yeah. way to die so so the, so assuming that that i thought was the image and not because you it is to assume that it's the last of it right so i don't think it was like a well goff's still alive i thought it was like with the carcass and the father you're seeing death here and the wonder is, is like i wonder and i and i can I hope that like the end game for Peacemaker is he dies? Like, is, is that makes sense for this character to die at the end? And that's kind of the last image of like he's at a point of change where it's like he's going to eventually get there. So he's like, he, you know, that that seemed like an interesting take to me because like he doesn't have to care who he kills to get there himself would be the inversion of that, which is usually the hero's journey anyway of self-sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. So, like, you know, and it makes sense that, like, he, he would, re- you know, the reverse of killing uh, what the the character um, from Suicide Squad. Uh, um, uh, Rick Flagg. Yeah, yellow shirt. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, like, that was... Uh, Charlie uh, Brown. Charlie Brown's character. <laughs> Uh, Charlie Brown's character <laughs> played by Charlie Brown, red flag. <laughs> oh dear! Oh. <laughs> Gets stabbed in the heart. <laughs> Eagerly has like a, a, a therapist ball. five cents football. stand. Keeps pulling the football away. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps pulling the football away. And then uh, Economo ends up back at work at the Bell Reef prison, and but now he's got a little picture in a frame of the Eleventh Street kids. Uh, that they took in the van, just sitting there on his desk, and he stops to which take I thought was a nice it. little, yeah. nice little touch. Um, but they they wrapped up this whole fucking series in like a nice little bow, and I'm so excited to see what James Gunn has planned for season two. So there's also a post credit, I believe. Oh yeah, and um, you get you get. Uh, it's nothing story related. It's just a joke. Judo yeah. Master is walking through the field of dead butterflies, eating cheetah, eating hot cheetos. No, that's not post credit. It's not supposed to go. Oh, no. So we forgot yeah, it's during the whole montage. And he, and he, and he, and he, and he cry, and he's just crying, and then like eating the hot cheetos. Yeah, he's just crying and eating hot cheetos. <laughs> and so Judo Master will be back for sure. Oh yeah, he'll be like, uh, like it's great. He's that villain of like. Uh, so we get the idea. His his motivation is kind of explained. He was he was another person that is like with them. You know, he's he's on their side. They don't want to take him over. Like he's he's legitimately. Their side. Which blasts a hole in my hot Cheetos theory about right, how he right, was eating right, them to right. prevent butterflies. Oh. 
God yeah. damn it. It'll still be a theory. But that he really loved them, and now he'll want to avenge them. So he'll probably, I would love the idea that he's just always trying to kill them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I would love if Judah Master was just someone that just like, in the midst of everything else that they're dealing with, just like, fuck Judo Master! <laughs> like, sure ah, damn know. it! We're trying to do shit, come they're on, like, man. They're like three villains down the line now. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's, I, that's my absolute hope, is that Judo Master just constantly shows up, throws a wrench into plans, like maybe a- sometimes has to fight with him to get out of something, but like, just always is out there. <laughs> always, just cartoon villain level. Always ready to, yes, complete cartoon villain level. He's perfect. All right. Um, Rock hard. That pretty much wraps up Peacemaker. Any closing thoughts aside from uh, the poignant ones that D's already made? What would we have done without this? Because I don't think Boba Fett would have sustained us. It was a little bit of double duty there, but Abs- it, it was, was an it. otherwise drought of content. Yeah. I mean. Well, that's what January and February be due. Yeah. yeah. January and February are kind of slow months for content. However. We have the Cuphead series on Netflix out now, which is apparently getting rave fucking reviews, and uh, we got the Batman coming out in just a low, just over two weeks, just oh, under two weeks. Gun. Henry Batman. Uh, I don't know about you guys. I have tickets <laughs> for the uh, Thursday night like showing, uh, like at six. When this Thursday? Next no, Thursday, Thursday the third of okay. March. Well. Well, stay tuned to see if we buy tickets. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the cliffhanger for the episode. That's dun, dun, dun. We have a drop. Oh, actually, that. speaking of Batman, we, how come he wasn't with the, the Justice League? Because he's, he's in rich. the middle of being recast between Ben Affleck and uh, he's uh, rich. Uh, yes, Robert he's Pattinson. Rich. They couldn't have had the Dark Knight in a shadowy silhouette. Batman costs money. Uh, Fair. So does Superman. Uh, they spent and this what, money on Superman. And Wonder Woman. They were like, let's go with uh let's go with Superman. I mean they got Wonder Wonder Fish Woman. Fucker himself in there. Yeah. They did get Fish Fucker himself. Clearly not that expensive. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing to do was promise him like five Mumia, minutes alone at sea really. World. Chris, you gotta remember these are the same people who did a Unite the Semit seven promotion for like five characters, so they forgot that certain characters exist, probably. <laughs> Unite the seven, right, 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 right. Like in Wait. in the boys. Yeah, is that what you're going for? No, 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 no. No, no that, that when, was literally the Justice League. Yeah, when Justice League was coming out, they said unite the seven, meaning the seven Justice League members. You know, all the characters that didn't have movies. Yeah, and it was <laughs> and it was Aquaman, Flash, Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman. You may be uh, and Cyborg. You may be thinking to yourself that's six characters. That is correct. <laughs> and then they were like, no further questions. <laughs> the, later they were like, oh, actually, they were uniting the seven. Kingdoms of mother boxes. What? Yeah, the, <laughs> there were three mother boxes, so I don't know. And so, I- ipso facto, seven. Uniting yeah. the seven dollars <laughs> in your wallet for a ticket. Yes, Oof. exactly. In, in 1925. <laughs> <laughs> Showing my age. Maybe if you're a senior <laughs> child, <laughs> a senior get a double discount there. We showed up. We showed up at 4 a.m. to go see the <laughs> the matinee. 4 a.m. on a. On a Tuesday in 1943. <laughs> <laughs> now you need a mother box to see Justice League. <laughs> Everyone had a mother box back then. If you like household the- items. Uh, if you liked what you heard, leave us a kind review on your favorite podcasting platform. Subscribe to us. Yeah, like to box us. your mother to get one. Download us every week. Put us in your ear holes. You leave my mother box out of this. We'll see you next time. I'll Goodbye. punch you right in your mother box. You guys are fucking weird. <laughs> that legit sounded like a fucking Conan O'Brien bit about going to the movies at 4 a.m. <laughs> in 1925. <laughs> Called them talkies back then. Caught up an old fashioned. Yeah. Went to the bar and got myself some gin neat and some cocaine gum. It was only 10 a.m. They didn't use to talk too much. Prescribed <laughs> by my doctor. Yes. Peacemaker. What a mother box. <laughs> <laughs>